Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. And for our next build, we're going to do a little kit review here of a tank. It's about time we did another tank, isn't it? So this is a TACOMS M60A3 with the M9 Bulldozer Blade. And it is in 135th scale. And it is kit number 2137. So there's the end of the box. On the on the it's such a big box. On the other side here, you can see we have two different paint schemes that are displayed there, and uh, some unit information there for those paint schemes. The other end of the box is exactly the same as the first one, and then on this end of the box or side. <laughs> Uh, we have the actual sprues that are in it. So I really like that TACCOM has done this. Uh, they show us how many sprues there are and uh, what they are, as well as the other accessories that are in the kit, uh, such as the uh, there, there's a tow rope and some photo etch that's included along with our decals or decals if you prefer. And so that's pretty much everything that's on the outside of the box, nothing on the back. So this kit first came out in uh, 2018 as the M68-3, and then this release was with new parts for that uh, uh, M9 bulldozer blade that comes with this particular kit that we're going to be building, and that came out in 2021. So it is a new kit, uh, not real new, but, <laughs> but probably one of the newest ones we've built on the channel. So uh, let's jump down on the bench anyway and take a look and see what's in this box. All right, sorry about the glare, but uh, just going over the front of the box here, uh, all hatches can be built in open or closed position, detailed static display plastic model, uh, PE and clear parts are included, uh, four types of markings, and one-piece tracks. So those are probably the uh, uh, the rubber band style tracks, but TACOM does a really good job with that. And very nice box art there. And down at the bottom, uh, let's see. It says, uh, this is not a toy, intended for collectors of age 14 years and above, uh, cement and paint not included. Model may vary from image on box. Uh, ready to assemble precision model kit. And, it, and again, there's your kit number there. So we'll just get the lid off of this thing. And there you can see exactly how they've packed this. There's no special supports or anything, but it is in a corrugated type box, so it protects everything, and it would appear that everything is sealed in different bags. There's our clear parts. There are two sprues in this particular bag. And here's our turret. Looks like part of a fording kit. And you just keep pulling them out. Uh, so these are the road wheels and everything. There are two sprues in this bag as well. Don't worry, we're going to pull all of these parts out of these plastic bags so you can get a good look at them. And this looks like, oh, part of the blade. Another sprue for our blade and hydraulic lines. And then we've got our fenders. Rear grill doors. Oh, these are absolutely beautiful. These are our tracks. We'll take a closer look at them in a minute. Separately wrapped, we have our hull. Bathtub type style hull. And then we have a bag with our instructions and our decals and our photo etch. And there are some little pins in there. And of course, we have a, a steel cable as well. Well, this one's copper, obviously, but uh, yeah, there we go. So let's look at these. Uh, I guess we'll start with the instructions. TACOM always packages everything very nicely. So we'll get rid of that. And let's see, we have our 
tow cable here. Very nicely done. I shouldn't have to make one of those. At least I think it's the tow cable. We'll find out when we get into the instructions. And here we have some photo etch. As you can see, it's the it's very nice. This is uh, for that bustle rack um, on the uh, back of the turret there. And then we have this mounting ring here, which I believe is the uh, for the canvas that goes around the mantlet and over the mantlet. So very nice detail on that. And then there's some little bitty pieces that are probably for brackets and such. I don't know what the other two are, but uh, we'll find out when we get into uh, uh, building it. Um, they, they do have this photo etch coated uh, with two thin pieces of plastic laminated over top of it. So that protects it and keeps it from uh, tarnishing. So that's nice. Then we have a little bag of, looks like two pins. There's two steel pins in there. Probably has something to do with the, well, I don't know. If I was to speculate, I would say it goes to the uh, the blade, maybe. Our dozer blade. Quickly, if I can get these out. Probably should have done that before I started the camera rolling. Here we go. So these are our decals. With our different unit markings on them. There is just a little bit of carrier film on the edges, which, I mean, you can trim that down very easily. Most of these are very square or rectangular, so it shouldn't be a problem. Very nice looking. They, they have a really flat finish. As you can see, we're not getting any glare off of those. And they seem to be fairly thin. So we want to be careful that these don't fold up on us. I do see right here on that B65. It's not uh, not printed correctly. Part of the six is missing. So I don't know. That, that, I mean, you know, <laughs> on combat vehicles, they tend to get dinged up anyway. So if you choose to uh, build Bravo 6.5, then some of your chipping's already done. <laughs> so, very nice, and I guess these uh, decals are made by Tacon. So, we will set them aside. Make sure we get the slick side down so it doesn't stick to anything. Set that aside. And then we have our instruction booklet. We'll just go through this really quick. Now, we do have um, a little bit of history of it here on the uh, front. It's kind of small writing. You probably can't read all that, but if you wanted to, you could pause the video and put your glasses on. <laughs> but uh, uh, this is part of the evolution of the M48 series tank. Um, developed into the M60 and then into the final version of the M60A3, which is the version that we're building. And opening up the book, uh, read before assembly. Uh, we have the, it's kind of shiny on this booklet, but uh, let's see, color info and profiles by Mig Jimenez. And they lay out the different colors of paint. That can be used on this, applying decals, removing PE, nice instructions for that. We also have another sprue map. Now this sprue map does not, yeah it does. It does have the numbers, the numbering. So if you wanted to or needed to look at each sprue and see what number it was for whatever reason, uh, it's there complete layout there uh, showing all of it cable two pins decals our photo etch and then everything else for the kit 
quite a lot of plastic in this kit. So let's see, step one, um, start off drilling holes. You know how I love to drill holes. Uh, and they, they give us the actual size, 0.8 millimeter. I imagine it looks like this, this is on the front of the vehicle on the lower hull. So this is probably everything that we need to do to attach our blade, our dozer blade. And then the buildup of the lower hull. Suspension components in step two, three, we have our final drives. Make two of those. And then we continue on with the lower hull buildup. Towing panel bracket and rear, rear light brackets there. So it's laid out very nice. Um, not overly complicated in any particular diagram. More suspension parts, our uh, road wheel arms, and of course our road wheels. 14 of these, and six of those, and two of these. Drive sprockets, those look nice. Support roller installation. Very nice. Here we start uh, the buildup of the upper hull. Light assemblies, hatches. I imagine that's for the hatch. The driver's hatch actually slides uh, across. It flips up and slides down. I don't know if it's a working hatch, but it might be. And they do tell us uh, to cut some things off of the deck there. And travel lock, filler cap. Then the attachment of the upper hull to the lower hull. And then we've got our rear grill doors, uh, lifting eyelets to put onto the lower hull. And here, oh, there we go. Now I know the two steel pins is for the connection of our tracks. There we go. So no glue and no uh, fooling around with staples or all that mess there. We just put our tracks together and slide the pin in. Very nice. Then we got our buildup of our fenders. And all of these fender supports Look like they have the lightweight flash holes cut through, front brackets. And then we get into our uh, the boxes that are on the uh, actual vehicle. Very nice. So they want us to put all these boxes on the fenders before installing the fenders. And then we install the fenders. And moving on to light brackets. Here is an exhaust pipe of some kind or an intake, one or the other. I don't remember what it is. <laughs> so I actually used to work on these things. Uh, anyway, we have hydraulic lines and brackets um, for our blade. So those need to be attached. They do have uh, some shields, some guards on them. Very nice. And this is more components here dealing with the uh, uh, the blade attachment, armored covers and what have you for probably the hydraulics. And then we get into building up our uh, blade. All the brackets and stuff, uh, the mounting to the hull, more uh, brackets and uh, elevation mechanisms for the blade, some covers. Well, there is a lot of parts into our M9 blade, as you can see there. And then we get into the blade it, itself. 
lots and lots of detail. And then the attachment of the blade to include a, a release handle. There's a release handle. The driver would pull that to unlock it so he could lower the blade. That's your travel lock. Then we get into drilling more holes into the turret uh, for all the attaching components. We have handrails and um, I don't know what that cover is, but lifting eyelets. All kinds of nice stuff. Look at that. Plenty of parts. Lots of detail. And loader's hatch. Covers for the periscope for the gunner. There's our tow cable. These are the little bitty PE brackets there that we're going to have to bend. TP6 times 12. So there's a lot of those to go on. They give us this nice detail here, showing us the exact location of where those go around the hull. So we do have fuel cans in this kit. Smoke grenade launchers there. And then the buildup of our uh, 50 caliber machine gun and the cupola. This was an armored cupola that had the gun mounted in it. There's quite a few parts in that. There's more parts probably in this cupola than most kits have on the entire turret. And then the mounting of the uh, cupola, and then we got our range finders, some other brackets, very nice. Then we get into our bustle rack. Very, very detailed on how to put that together. And then the installation of the cupola, I mean the uh, uh, bustle rack, fuel cans, smoke dischargers on that side. Then we get into our main armament. This should be our 105 millimeter gun. And we have several different pieces here for our uh, mantlet cover. It should paint up nicely. Lots of detail. And then, of course, we install the main gun. Uh, apparently, this does not uh, elevate and depress. It's just mounted in, in place. And then we have that PE part that goes around it. Nice detail there. And then we stick our turret on. We also have our color callouts here. So there are different versions that we can make. It's an interesting whitewash there. And they have our full color callouts at the top with the, uh, uh, the MIG paint numbers on them if you want to use the MIG type paints. And here's our last two uh, for the markings. So we have uh, decals for four different versions. Very nice. And then there are other products on the back page being advertised there. M60A1, Merkava AK-130 naval gun, and this uh, launcher here from the Russian Navy. And that's it. That's it for our instructions. All right, so let's have a good look at our parts. Now, this is a bathtub style hull, and you can see where they have the little indicators here where we're going to have to drill some holes for our uh, M9 bulldozer blade that we're going to mount to the front because they're not drilled through and you can see that texturing so these tanks were mostly cast the holes were cast the tear the uh, <laughs> let me 
turrets. Turrets were cast and uh, the hatches and everything. See here we got some hull casting numbers. Nicely detailed. Bolt details. Really beautifully made. And then all of these units here that hold the bearings for our road wheel arms, they are all cast right into this piece. Along with the anchors for the opposite side uh, torsion bars, those are all nicely detailed with the four bolt pattern. Also the escape hatch, uh, the belly access covers. Very, very nicely done. And you can see we have our weld detail where the hull was welded together. Beautiful work, beautiful. There's actually a casting right there too of a number. Very nice. So that is our lower hull. Next up, we've got our tracks. Now these are these are rubber tracks. You can see we've got our rubber pads that were bolted on to the uh, track shoes so that the tanks didn't tear up the road surfaces and stuff. And you didn't get metal to road and rock and terrain uh, wear, which made the tracks last longer. You only had to replace those pads. And if we flip it over, we can see the little uh, stud nut detail down inside there for uh, bolting our track pads on. Our end connectors also have the bolt detail in it. And then for our center connectors, or which are the, also the guides, there is a, down inside there, you can see that we have a nut and stud detail. I know it's probably hard for you guys to see this, but uh, because it's black, but uh, very nicely made. So the only thing that we have to worry about is going to be the um, sprue gates right there. We'll just, well... May not have to worry about them too much. There's not much holding them on there. I just pulled that one off. So those are the tracks. We have two of these. Very nice. So the first sprues up will be sprue A. Now we got two of these. And these have our road wheels and our uh, drive sprocket hub and some fender detail and stuff. Let's take a look at this. You can see we have the uh, mounting nuts detail there. Center hub as well. It's got the little stud and nut detail. Drive sprockets. Now this is the back side of the drive sprockets. The through bolt detail there where they bolt to the flange. We'll flip it over here, and you can see the recessed mounting bolt detail. Very nice. On our drive hub, down inside, we've got our stud and nut detail down in there as well. And then the clean-out holes are molded right into it. There's a little bit of a seam line there that we'll have to clean up. That's no biggie. There's a shackle. It actually has the loop on the end. Can you see that? There we go. See the loop on the end for uh, turning out the, uh, the pin. That's a nice detail there. And we have caps that will go on I think they go on here 
<laughs> we'll find that uh, when we get in the instructions. But I'm pretty sure these are the end caps that go on the mountings there for our torsion arms. Looks like it. Yeah, I would say so. I'm already assembling it in my head. <laughs> Here we have a headlight. Very nice. Very nicely made. Road wheel arm detail. Beautiful work. Really, really nice. These are our support rollers with all the attachment hardware molded in very nicely. We have the back side and the front side of our uh, final drives with the recessed bolt detail there. Beautiful work. Oh, really, really good. So that's sprue A, and there are two of those. So next up is sprue E. I will try to do these in order. Um, this has our upper and lower turret. As you can see here, we got that casting detail again. It's beautiful work there. Casting number right into the top there. Casting detail also on the bottom of the turret there. Gorgeous work. Here is our armored cupola for the uh, commander. Also a casting number on it. Now they did not provide these I guess with uh, clear parts so we're gonna have to paint these viewports because they are just cast in as a flat piece. This kit does have clear parts. This is a snorkel and then this is a replacement grill door in case you want to add the snorkel because uh, it has this little plate, adapter plate there uh, already mounted on it which would not be on the regular grill door. There are even casting numbers uh, on the grill door next to the hinges. <laughs> it's great. And we have our hatches. Those also have that nice detail, that nice texture. So that's screw, uh, sprue, <laughs> sprue E. I'll try to keep these in order. Next up, and that is sprue F. And here we have the top of the hull. Again, that casting detail, that texturing, very nice. We have our grill, all of our uh, louvered doors here for access. And weld seams. We have our weld seams on there. Beautiful work. And we have some lids here, or yeah, lids for our uh, uh, toolboxes. We got the hinge detail. And here's the two large boxes with the corresponding hinge detail there. Nice work. So that's sprue F. Next is sprue G. And so we have our fenders. And they all have the bolt detail. Very nicely made. Very nice. Uh, either filter packs or something, I believe. 
These right here are the main grill doors for the rear. As, you, as I pointed out before in the previous sprue, this one doesn't have the, uh, the plate on it for the uh, snorkel. So if you're going to build it without the snorkel, you'll use this door. The grab handle for opening these doors is already molded straight onto the part. Very finely done. As you can see, they are really, really thin and small. We have to be careful with those not to break that. Uh, two more of our toolboxes there, the hinge detail. Really, really wonderful work. Bolt detail, lifting eyes. This is for our towing pintle. Driver's hatch. And we have all these finely done brackets for our fenders. More brackets for the fenders. I think these are for the idlers here for our track. Some armored covers. And of course we have our shocks for the suspension. And shock attachment points. Bump stop brackets. All nicely done. We even have, hopefully you can see it, that fine screw thread there for our, I think it's the uh, slack adjusters. We'll find out when we start building. Beautiful. So that's sprue G. Very nice. Next up is sprue N. And lots of little parts. <laughs> uh, mainly, we have our uh, bustle rack tubing here. And you can see there is uh, one, two, three pieces. And of course, that um, photo etch will go on there as well. And then we have the L brackets that make up the bustle rack. And this is the mini mat mantlet there for our 50 cal that goes on our commander's cupola. That's a canvas cover. Very nice. Uh, the vent fan cover. Really wonderful detail. And we also have our smoke dischargers. Those are slide molded. Along with this bracket here, it's slide molded as well. It's got that fine those holes already molded into them. And our 50 caliber barrel for the commander's cupola. We have uh, range finders. Wonderful detail. Some of our fuel cans. Straps nicely molded on. And you can, oh no, these are not fuel cans, these are water cans. I don't know if you can see it or not, but right up underneath the strap there it says water. Ha! Huh. Very nice. And these are the discharger brackets, I believe. Part of them. For the smoke dischargers. And here's some more brackets there. Very nice. Alright, so that's sprue in. Next we have sprue <laughs> sprue L. <laughs> Apparently the hillbilly alphabet, the L comes after uh, the N. <laughs> uh, so we have our main gun matlet cover. Okay. Uh, that's canvas, and then here are the edge canvas pieces uh, that will go with that. Nicely done. There is a one-piece gun tube that has been slide molded. And here is the uh, bore evacuator. It's two pieces. It'll go around the, the barrel there. 
couple of brackets. And then we have this tool right here on the very end. This is for bending uh, that photo etch that's going to go around our bustle rack. So that's very nice. It's indexed correctly so that uh, we can't we can't get that wrong. <laughs> uh, and that's sprue L. Next up is sprue P. And we have another gun tube. And this gun tube is two pieces. So what's the difference? No, it's three pieces. We have a, uh, the muzzle end there. There's the muzzle end. We have two-piece gun tube. Why? Uh, let's check it out. Let's see why. Here's L <laughs> that we looked at earlier. So this gun tube, which is one piece. Oh, I see. Difference is the two-piece gun tube has the heat shields on them with the clamps. This gun tube doesn't have any heat shields. So apparently that's an option. I think I like the the heat shields. Unfortunately, we're going to have to uh, build that gun tube, but that's the difference. And we also have these smoke discharge uh, can or uh, boxes that mount to the turret too. And there's two more. Uh, Range finders. Oh, I see the difference. These, one has one of the protective doors closed, and the other one, I guess there's a door here. Probably that right there. Yep. So you can have that detail with the door open on it. Nicely done. So that is Sprue P. On to Q. And here we have some more cans. So these are two fuel cans. Oh, no, wait a minute. Are they fuel cans or water cans? I think these are water cans, too. No, this would be a fuel can. Two fuel cans and two water cans. Okay. <laughs> I got it straight. See, your water cans will have a single bar across the top. These were plastic, either pan, pan, or uh, molded in black or sand. Uh, normally in Germany they were in black. It says water underneath the strap there. And then these two handles here, of course, go to our fuel cans. And then we have our railings, our grab handle rather, that goes along the left and right side of the turret. And also we have the ends for our tow cable. And they too are slide molded in the end. Very nice. Cute. Now for W. I mean not W, but U. <laughs> it's a hillbilly uh, alphabet thing. <laughs> anyway, U. Uh, we have uh, the front portion of our blade for our dozer blade and the back structure for it as well. And apparently maybe you replace one of the fenders or yeah, front fender corners there uh, if you're mounting the blade because this is all uh, the blade stuff. Hydraulic lines for the cylinders that lift our blade up and down. We have our cutting edge for the front of the blade, and then this structure here, I think, goes up underneath the front of the blade. And hydraulic cylinders and more cover plates to protect our lines. Uh, one of our, part of our shield there for our uh, cylinders, I believe. And then lots and lots and lots of these little brackets.
Wonderful work. Flip it over. This front fender section also has the bolt detail on the underside. Now there are some ejector pin marks. I don't think you'll ever be able to see those, but uh, those can be cleaned up. But all your other ejector pin marks is <clears throat> all on the inside. So that won't be an issue with it. And on the back side of the uh, wire edge, we also have our little bolt details in there. Very nice. Very, very nice. And they slide molded this cover. Imagine we have a hose that connects up there. Very nice. Great job with these. And very, very, very little flash. I wouldn't even call it flash, to be honest with you. Uh, just uh, mold seam lines. Very nice. And now we have W. There it is. I know it was there somewhere. <laughs> and these are more of the brackets and mounting hardware for uh, our blade. These, I believe, would be the co armored covers, or part of them anyway, for the cylinders. Here's our hydraulic cylinders, or the top portions of them anyway. Nice detail. And if you can look and see what the really fine detail. I don't know if those are castle nuts or just looks really, really good. And there is some slide molding going on here. I don't know why they felt they needed to do that, but they did. Beautiful brackets. Even these brackets here were slide molded. As you can see, they are slide molded into the ends there instead of having an extra piece to put on them it's all made into one a lot of engineering into this kit there's our handle for our travel lock very fine very very fine detail in a lot of kits, you would probably try to make this up to get it scaled down so that it looks correct. But these look really, really good, really correct. All right, so that is uh, W. <laughs> Back to that hillbilly alphabet. <laughs> this, uh, this is Sprue H, which is our clear parts. Uh, Vision blocks and periscopes, and that's that's it. Oh, and some uh, headlight lenses. But that's uh, that's all there is there. I don't I don't think we'll be seeing through these, but uh, that is our our clear sprue H. Apparently, it comes after W in my alphabets. <laughs> And that's it. That's everything that's in the box of our TACCOM. This box is so big, I gotta put it on my shoulder. <laughs> M60A3 with the M9 bulldozer in 135th scale, and that is kit uh, 2137. Yes, 2137. <laughs> so, uh, I'm looking forward to building this one, and I hope you got to see, uh, as I tried to give you as good of a look as I could. Uh, there's so much detail here and so much texturing and stuff. Now, the majority of the parts that were on this particular vehicle, uh, hatches and the turret and the hull and all that stuff, well, the, all that stuff was cast. So, uh, great job on the casting detail. Uh, at least we don't have to add any of that. So that's that's a good thing because there's a lot of parts that had casting detail too. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Special thanks to uh, all my subscribers because of you guys. I keep making these videos and I hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, if you did, uh, don't forget to give a like. And if you are new to the channel, 
and you're not a subscriber, I hope that today I earned a subscription. So we're going to move on and build this. So uh, look forward to the next video. will be coming up shortly. Uh, and we're going to start building this kit. Uh, you guys stay safe. And I'll see you in the next one.